In this video, I want to talk about resistors that are connected in parallel. So what do we mean when we say a resistor or any two elements are connected in parallel? So when two elements connect at a single node pair, they are said to be in parallel. So let's just see what happens when we have two elements connected in series first. And then I will show you when they are connected in parallel. So we have these two resistors, but they are not connected. If they are connected in series, they look something like this. You have seen it in a previous video. So as you can see, they are both connected to a single node. So this you can consider it to be the single node. There is no other element in between them. Now, let's just see what happens when they are connected in parallel. So when they are connected in parallel, they all uh, are connected at a single node pair. So, now instead of sharing one node, they share two nodes. So we have our one here, we have our two here. So that's when we say they are all connected in parallel. So here you see an example of four resistors that are connected in parallel. So as you can see, these four resistors plus this uh, independent voltage source, they all share these two nodes, node A and node B. So that's why we say they are all connected in parallel. Or another way you can say R1 and R2 in parallel, R2 and R3 are in parallel, R3 and R4 are in parallel, and the voltage source and R1 are parallel. So the conclusion is the same. All of them are connected in parallel. So now that we have this, let's just see how we can find the current that goes through these four uh, resistors. So to do that, it's a good practice to uh, assign some voltage polarities. So I assign the voltage uh, polarities for all of them in the same manner. And for the current, I just say we have I1, we have I2, we have I3, and we have I4 all going from top to bottom. So now that we have this for this node, for node A, right, we can write the KCL. So for node A, we write the KCL. So in this node, we have IS to be entering the node. So we use the negative sign to represent it. We have I1 to be leaving the node, so we use it with positive sign, so we have I1. We have I2 also to be leaving the node, we have positive I2. We have I3 to be leaving the node, we use it with positive sign, I3. And finally we have I4 to be leaving the node, so we have I4. And we know that from KCL, the algebraic sum of all the currents that enter or exit a node equals zero. Right? So that is the result of applying KCL at node A. Don't get confused by these extra dots that we have here. Since there is no element in between the dots, they are practically the same node. So if I, instead of drawing it like this, I draw it this way. Right? So this can be A and this can be B and R1, R2, R3 and R4. So these two circuits are completely identical. 
if I add this voltage source to. So when you see dots in the circuits, don't automatically assume that they are different nodes. Look to see if there is any element between the nodes or between the dots. If there is no element between them, that means that they are practically the same uh, node. So from this, we conclude that IS equals I1 plus I2 plus I3 plus I4. So this is the first conclusion that we have from this circuit that whatever current this voltage source is providing gets divided between these four resistors. But we still cannot say anything about the exact values of these four uh, currents, right? So we applied the KCL. Now let's just say what we can do with the KVL. So, if you remember from before, we said that KVL can be applied on any closed path in the circuit. So, how many closed paths we have in the circuit? So, if I can count, let's just say we have this closed path, that's one. Then we have this closed path, two. This closed path, three. This closed path. Four. You can say this as a closed path. You can say this also as a closed path from Vs going to R3 and then coming back, right? So as you can see, the number of closed paths that you can consider for this circuit uh, can be very large, right? So you can, for example, say R1 and R3 create a closed path. So for us right now we don't want to consider all the closed path for um, right now we only consider the the one that give us a relationship for the voltages of individual resistors so to do that i can consider this closed path and write the equation for it so for this closed path let me just call it one we have negative Vs plus V1 to be equal to 0. We know that V1 equals R1 multiplied by I1. So it is R1 multiplied by I1. So if I replace this in the above equation, we see that Vs equals R1 I1. So let's just do another time for this closed path. I call this number two. So for number two, so this one was number one. For number two, we have negative Vs plus V2 following the passive sign convention to be equal zero. Also, we know that V2 equals R2 multiplied by I2. So again, if I replace this in the above equation, what I get is Vs to be equal to R2 multiplied by I2. I can do the same for this closed path and the larger one as well. So if I do that, uh, I get to the same conclusions. So what is the conclusion here? Is Vs equals R1 I1 which equals R2 I2 which equals R3 I3 and finally equals R4 uh, I4 so this is the second conclusion that we get Another way of looking at this is that since each one of these elements right, share these two nodes and all of them are connected to the positive and negative side of this voltage source, 
they must have the same voltage, right? So conceptually, because they share the same uh, two nodes, the voltage across them is equal. So that is the conclusion that we have here. So parallelly connected circuit elements have the same voltage across their terminals. So if they are in series, the current is the same. If they are in parallel, voltage is the same. So that is the conclusion that we have doing this uh, analysis. So we have the, the first conclusion applying the KCL for node A and then we have this second conclusion applying the KVL uh, for these four uh, closed paths that we have. So now based on this let's just find out what is the value for uh, IS. To do this uh, what I can do is that I use these equations and plug the results into the the first equation so we have uh, is to be equal to i1 so what is i1 based on this equation i1 r1 equals vs we know that i1 equals vs divided by r1 i do the same for i2 as well so it is vs divided by r2 Vs divided by R3 to calculate I3 and finally we have Vs divided by R4. So like when we did for the resistors in series we want to find an equivalent resistance. So for the equivalent resistance we just say this equals to R uh, Vs over R Eq or the equivalent resistance. So this part gives us the 1 over R Eq. So we have Is over Vs equals 1 over R Eq which equals 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3 plus 1 over R4. So when we are working with resistors that are in series, the equivalent resistance is going to be the sum of all the resistors that are in series. So let's just say RK. When there are resistors that are in parallel, 1 over RQ, REQ, equals 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus all the way to 1 over, uh, sorry, 1 over RK. So for all uh, intentions and purposes from the eyes of this voltage source, it doesn't matter if these two uh, terminals are connected to a single resistor for which the value is calculated this way or four resistors that are all in parallel with the values R1, R2 and R3 and R4. So in general if we have K resistors that are all connected in parallel, the equivalent single resistor has a resistance that equals 1 over REQ equals, again we have the summation sign for 1 over RI for I changing from 1 to K, which equals 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 
all the way to 1 over RK. So let's just take a look at one uh, single example, one very basic example. So let's just say we have a resistor with the value 4 ohms and another, another resistor with the value 6 ohms. So what is the equivalent resistance that we see when we look uh, in this direction? So 1 over our EQ equals 1 over 4 plus 1 over 6. We have on the denominator 24, on the numerator we have 6 plus 4 which equals 10 over 24. So that means that the REQ is 24 over 10 or 2.4 ohms. So as you can see, the equivalent resistance is smaller than both 4 ohm and 6 ohm. So let's just do the same for two resistors that are connected in series. Two exactly the same resistors. But now this time they are connected in series. So we have 4 ohm, we have 6 ohm, and we want to find the equivalent resistance looking from this direction. So for the resistors that are connected in series, the equivalent resistance was the sum of these resistors. So we have 4 plus 6 equals 10 ohm. So the equivalent resistance is larger than all of these uh, individual resistors. So these we have, we have 4 ohm, we have 6 ohm. When they are connected in series, these two, the equivalent resistance becomes 10 ohm, which is larger than both 4 and 6. So this is true for no matter how many resistors that you have in series. So the equivalent resistance is going to be always larger than the individual resistors. When they are connected in parallel, the equivalent resistance is always smaller than the individual resistance, uh, resistors. Or you can say it uh, another way is that the equivalent resistor is always smaller than the resistance with the smallest value. So between 4 and 6, which one is the smaller? It is 4, right? So 2.4, the equivalent resistor when they are uh, connected in parallel, is a smaller than the smallest resistor, which basically means that it is a smallest than all of the individual resistors. So that is something that you should have always in mind. If you have a bunch of resistors that are all connected in series and you want to find the equivalent resistance, but the result is not larger than all the individual ones, there is something wrong. On the other hand, if you have a bunch of resistors that are all connected in parallel and you want to find the equivalent resistance, and the final result is not smaller than all of them, then there is definitely something wrong. So sometimes it is easier to use conductance instead of uh, resistance when we want to find the uh, equivalent resistor. So if you use conductance, the equation becomes much more uh, simpler or straightforward. But of course, you know for each one of them, you need to calculate the, the conductance first, right? Unless you are given the conductance, if you are given the resistance, that means that you have to do, uh, you have to calculate the conductance of individual resistors first, and then you can use this simplified equation. So let's just... Uh, find out a more generalized uh, equation for when we have two resistors. And based on that generalized equation, I want to uh, draw some conclusions. 
So it is very good to memorize the equivalent resistance when two resistors are connected in parallel without doing the actual uh, calculations. So let's just take a look at this circuit. We have R1 and R2 to be connected in parallel. And as you can see, they both share these two nodes, node A and node B. So the goal here is to find the equivalent resistance when we are looking in this direction. So we want to see what is the equivalent resistance between terminal A and terminal B. So if you follow the equations, we have 1 over R EQ equals 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. This equals R1 multiplied by R2 and on the numerator we have R2 plus R1. So if, if I inverse both sides of the equation, we have REQ equals R1 R2 divided by R1 plus R2. So this is the simple equation that you get when you have only two resistors to be uh, connected in parallel. What about if you have more than two and you, and you want to find the equivalent resistance for all of them? So you consider you can consider them to be parallel in pairs, right? So let's say you have four resistors to be connected in parallel. What you can do is that you can use this equation to find the equivalent resistance for uh, this one. And then you basically uh, replace these two with the equivalent resistance. And then you, do, you use the same equation to find the equivalent resistance between this one and the equivalent resistance of the previous step. And then you repeat this process one more time to get the final equivalent resistance for uh, the whole circuit. And as you can see, you can repeat it as many times as you want. And you can also change the order too. So for example, you can do it first for these two and then do for these and then finally for the last one. Right? So this is the same equation but uh, much nicer. So what happens if you have R1 and R2 to be very different in size? So let's just say you have R1 and R2, but R2 is 100 times smaller than R1. So let's just say we have R2 to be 100 times or much larger than R1. What happens to this equation? So I call this case one. So for case one, we have uh, our EQ now to be R1 multiplied by 100 times R1 divided by R1 plus 100 times R1. So this means that we have 100 R1 squared on the numerator and we have 101 R1 in the denominator. So we have 100 divided by 101. So this approximately is 1. And then we have R1 squared over R1 which is R1. So as you can see when R2 or when one of the resistor is several orders of magnitude larger than the other one, the equivalent resistance is uh, close to R1. It's very close. It's still smaller than R1, but it is very close. So this is the first case. You can easily see the other case too. Let's just say what, we ha what happens when we have R2 to be 
100 times smaller than R1. So here we have our EQ to be R1 multiplied by 0.01 R1 divided by 1 plus oh, sorry R1 plus uh, 0.01 R1. So in this case what we have is we have uh, 0 0.01 uh, R1 squared divided by 1.01 R1. So this is approximately 1. So if you do this, this is going to be approximately 0 0.01 R1 or this from the first assumption we know it is R2 right so these two cases are uh, identical so if you have two resistors that are very different in size so one is uh, 10 or more times larger than the other one right so when you put them in parallel the result will be almost close to the a smaller one so this is the uh, conclusion that we get so what if we have one of the resistors to go to either zero to or to infinity so in another one what if instead of let's say R2 we connect a switch an ideal switch something that you have seen it before so let's just say we have A and B here and we have R1 and it is connected to an open switch so if you remember from before an open switch equals to having infinite uh, resistance because there is no current going through it so when R2 goes to infinity in this equation, as you can see, R1 uh, plus R2 becomes closer and closer to infinity. So the value of R1 is not important anymore. So in this case, R1 plus R2 is approximately R2 because R2 is very, very large. So now we have our EQ to be R1 multiplied by R2 approximately divided by R2 which is equal to R1 so it means that if you have R1 being connected to a switch that is open the equivalent resistance is practically R1 what about if the switch is closed or if the switch is on, right? What if uh, R2 gets closer and closer to zero? So in this case, R1 plus R2 is approximately R1. Which means that the equivalent resistance is going to be R1 R2 divided by R1 which is going to be R2 so since R2 is going to 0 that means that the equivalent resistance is going to be 0 so if you have a switch that is closed to be in parallel with R1 practically there is no resistance between A and B it's going to be a short circuit so in this video we saw how we can find the equivalent resistance for the resistors that are connected in parallel we saw a very uh, handy equation for when only two resistors are connected in parallel and we also did some analysis on 
what happens when one of the resistors is very large or one of them is very small or if one of them goes to uh, get close to infinity or get close to zero.